Okay. So, my name again is Luke Nathan Hayes, and I've been working on this idea of creating a digital aura as an interface for computers. And I'm going to take you through a bit of a walkthrough on a wireframe app that I've been creating. Now, it's not it's partially functional. I have to still connect the Unity aspect and a few APIs, but what I'm going to show you now is just the first draft process on how people can input their own data into this app and then start to apply artificial intelligence algorithms to their data so that they can then visually display their information in a multi-dimensional light field aura that interfaces with their smartphone, with their PC, with uh, the Internet of Things, cloud, social media, all of that. So let's change screens and I'm going to skip the login. So bear with me that this is just a wireframe. So um, first I'll take you to the Aura Alliance page where the vision is to create value for the members of Aura Alliance, our customers, partners and supporters, while promoting and involving the use of Aura interfaces for the Internet of Good. Plan on having a, a marketplace of Aura Alliance members, so I'm going to first of all ask any business in the world that has uh, Aura in their trading name. So if you, if you have the name Aura, A-U-R-A, in your business trading name, then uh, potentially you can be a, a member. Um, I haven't worked out a pricing structure or anything yet. We're getting feedback from people. It'll probably be a seven or eight different levels of how you can interact with the Aura Alliance. But um, we'll go back here. There'll be a marketplace to promote things for uh, the Aura Alliance. And just looking at the there's more than 10,000 businesses in around the world with Aura in their trading name and they, they tend to be mainly accommodation, creative industries, event management, health and well-being like yoga and fitness and Ayurveda and, and then also there's quite a number of cities and uh, developments that have Aura in their trading name. Been looking at uh, the use of distributed public ledgers um, which is sort of the base technology of blockchain for both a reputation management system and an on and the online marketplace so that transactions can be uh, made on a public ledger that is immutable. Put some tutorials and uh, then connect on to uh, numerous blockchains. go back to the quick launch menu here we go this is the quick launch menu into the auras so the top one this is the outside view uh, it's like the orb that goes around your protects your entire aura uh, on the inside of that orb so if you're looking from the center perspective out from the inside of the shell you'll get to access a solar system scope. Uh, if you want to look outside in, you'll get to use Google Earth API. This is a list of the 100 smart cities in India and the top 25 most popular populated cities of Pakistan um, that uh, I'd like to put computer systems in to help civil services to really take leaps and bounds towards Global Joyful Virch <laughs> hold on. GADRA. Global Association for Joyful Responsible Abundance on Earth. Uh, and then the rest of these auras is going into uh, the programming of, of a ma matrix. So when, when you get to have programmed your aura, you'll be able to select and toggle different views whether you're on the inside you'll be able to click click these 
and add information streams or TV screens or social media streams to each of the squares. Uh, on the outside you'll be able to put permissioned content for other pit, other devices and people connecting to your aura they'll get to see that what's on the inside here only you'll get to see what's on the outside will be totally permissioned so the right person will more often than not get the right information and your privacy will be protected so We uh, to to build an aura first. We're starting with a 12 by 24 matrix. What happens then is each of these cells is a program will be a programmable object. So you can associate any content, whether it's a sound, a sight, a word, a letter, a number, a symbol, with each of these, and that can be shortcuts it can be part of uh, an algorithm for machine learning um, there'll be many ways to use this but then the second uh, phase of that is to turn it into a cylinder so you're folding it in on onto itself and then you've got your inside and outside view it will go there uh, then turning it into a torus so you're folding the ends of the, the cylinder together um, and then you turn it into a full horn torus. Now, there are specific reasons for going about it this way, but we won't really go into that now. Uh, instead, uh, we'll look at the other. This is this will be your main panel in the beginning. Um, so this one here is about where you uh, will generate up to four or five different types of avatars for yourself like digital copies uh, this one will take all of your information out of your aura and connect it to a uh, the compass and a geotagged map so it will help you to identify where opportunities are nearby so these lights will change direction pointing at the as you change orientation and layers of your aura so you'll be able to go and find opportunities nearby nothing is like this I've, I've seen nothing like I guess you could say that some of the dating apps like happen uh, and um, like proximity alert things uh, for dating they're kind of scratching the surface on this but the way an aura will will be set up um, this is going to blow people's socks off. Then we've got all the other algorithms here. Um, so, gaze detection, let's cycle through. Oh, no, not that one. Algorithms. Gaze tracking, face recognition, object detection, measuring tool, hand tracking, recommendations, nearby friends, the opportunities nearby, navigation pathfinder journey planner like the traveling salesman algorithms anomaly detection sentiment analysis home automation personal assistant uh, AI or artist disability support with the avatars and auras being able to support people that have limited functionality in their body and then full simulations uh, will come at the end of, of all of those so you either need to have a cloud computer that supports that processing of the, these some of these algorithms or a high performance computer such as like a three four five hundred thousand baht computer uh, you'll be able to set your advertising preferences the different types of memory where you store it whether it's on your mobile device on your home computer in the cloud managing your internet of things, uh, drones, cloud storage, uh, all, of, all of this will be in your control. Um, then the social setup, be putting your wish, wish lists, the things that you want to do before you die, the bucket list, even though we're entering an age where potentially we can outrun death and become semi-immortal 
or still got to have that list of things that you want to do favorites lists so just making lots and lots of lists of different favorite things there's one one on the internet that's like 101 lists that if you write a go through and do 101 lists you will know yourself really well and you'll be able to with the assistance of an aura make your life really really uh, well so much better than it is now uh, setting the proximity favorites of your of your aura so as, as your aura extends away from you in the virtual space other people with auras will be aware that your personal space is exactly like might be three foot might be five meters might be uh, right in close um, but the auras will be able to sense each other's personal preferences and then allow the operator to know how to interact with people so that we have higher level of interaction with all, all the gibberish chit chat that we repeat all the time every time we meet a new p person we'll be able to go over past that beyond that because the that general stuff will get sorted by the aura and we'll get to communicate in the more interesting things that we really want to talk about so it'll generate higher levels of trust that's a key thing having an aura and getting these little chit chat things out of the way automated automatically with your aura and avatar you'll have more trust and uh, you'll be able to interact at a more interesting level and also there's like your public goals so if you if you're happy for anyone in the world to know what your public goals are and help you if they uh, like if they share that goal then you'll be able to connect with them and then of course all your travel plans but up here uh, we're going to allow you to connect into the APIs of social media so data access or data import data access is when you will uh, log into the API of say Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever uh, this will be a, a touch sensitive map where you can just scroll through and select one or you can request an API um, if you can like if the service allows you to import like download your entire file from them like Facebook and LinkedIn and a lot of them are now allowing you to download all of your information you'll be able to upload that data set into your aura uh, and then you'll be able to analyze the, that data so with those other all those algorithms that we mentioned before um, we'll be able to help you to analyze that much much faster and then of course timelines so we've got loads of stuff in here from the timelines timelines are going to be really important for when you want to uh, tune your algorithm so the timelines they absolutely critical timelines and prior prioritize there's three things timelines priorities and filters so by having these set up right with your personal data you'll be able to empower algorithms to more efficiently generate results and suggestions for you to choose your way through to your uh, ideal life so it's really important that we put as much uh, information into the timeline section uh, and the wish lists here yeah. so like some of these things like at first seem a bit weird like looking at the date time place and synchronicity of your birth so doing things things like that will allow you to see uh, opportunities that were previously hidden they might some people might call them synchronicities uh, where things just feel right and you don't know why I've got a feeling that there's behind the layers of reality there there are me mechanisms that are connected to the synchronicity of key events in your life such as your birth and um, 
Yeah. So we're going to try and see what we can find from adding a few extra uh, data sets like this. And so uh, from birthdays, then we've got milestones. You can set all different milestones and re reminders for goals, distances, weights, weight, health, travel, output, input, axle. Uh, acquisitions, all the different achievement counters that you might want to set, whether it's actions, timers, laps, date, date countdowns, uh, cooking stuff, timers, uh, you know, days of the week, like to-do lists, setting reminders, connecting into other calendars, uh, all your weather priorities and display preferences. So going to set for preferences for uh, your 2D on your mobile phone like your standard weather report or three dimensional that's in your aura uh, and has object recognition for like when you show the sun in the screen you get the temperature or the weather come up and you'll be able to set all how, how that those preferences and visualizations work for you well how you want them to work for you um, setting in your favorite activities that are influenced by the weather so you can create alerts so we're predicting in three days or two days that it's going to be perfect or a week that the surf's going to be awesome you got to get uh, start making plans uh, yeah there's so many different ways that we can uh, connect the personal cycles the celestial cycles the weather cycles and the more of these data sets that we put together, the better the picture we can put, we, we can um, visualize. And when we can visualize these pictures digitally instead of mentally, so we need to be able to visualize them in the computers very easily from speech and body language, uh, even gaze detection, like where, where you're looking with virtual reality and augmented reality the, this is possible and the interface is uh, much more intuitive because uh, yeah when you when I'm looking up to my left or you're right <laughs> um, yeah the computer can know that and start to compute the area of the aura that you're about to interact with uh, another thing I've found in traveling that ceremonies are, are really important in having a strong community and there's a like this is just this is a non-exhaustive list of ceremonies that will help to uh, bring a community together and and also strong individuals within that community uh, res responsible abundance is what I'm aiming for uh, so the ceremonies about this appreciation for the season seasons love luck good fortune specific environments or uh, spirit animals uh, congratulations good willing farewells deaths births birthdays mothers fathers brothers sisters wider family partnerships friendships courtship all these kind of things help cement relationships uh, and like you know a lot of the western cultures Australia, US, England, really, uh, really high divorce rates. Um, but, I mean, I won't go into that now. It's for another one. We just go keep going through. Uh, just in time learning. When you've got an aura and a headset, or using your your uh, mobile phone as a as a window to your to your aura that you can uh, use your front and rear front and rear camera. The algorithm will show you uh, what. Hold on. You'll be able to point behind your phone, and your phone will recognize what's going on with the camera, and then compute the aura actions. Um, when you've got that capability, you can start to have just-in-time learning, which. Uh, basically turns any human being into a subject matter expert so we can what a, what I want to see is that we 
the world automates everything because uh, with artificial intelligence and uh, 3D simulations, we can literally in almost no time automate everything in a virtual space. So every, every experience of work uh, that we have or we need, because as we go to automation, some jobs are gonna be like, relegated to history. And then humans are going to have the choice of, well, do I want to work? Where do I want to work? Why do I want to work? Do I, do I work because I want to feel passion? Do I work before I, because I want to feel uh, gratitude or other people appreciate, appreciate me because I put this energy in? These are the kind of things where, how do we derive meaning from work and family and uh relaxation and enjoyment and health and exploration and travel we'll be able to manage these things these complexities quite easily through digital auras and i mean so what if if it takes you two months three months six months of your life to build an aura that interfaces with the internet the way that you want it I mean, what, what is six months of your life if you've got the perfect operating system for the rest of your life? I mean, something that'll last with you even through the space age as human beings become multiplanetary species and we have engineering colonies on the moon and Mars and uh, the asteroid belt. And I mean, there's even now uh, some test, several different types of test motors that will be able to take us outside of the solar system to other other uh, other star systems exploring so like in the next 10 years 20 years tops we'll be on like <laughs> feet on the ground on other planets in other star systems so if you spend six months now or a year now building the perfect aura and and you've spent twenty thousand dollars on on a computer to support that instead of buying a car you're making a like i see auras and these high performance computers as being the second most possibly even the most important life purchase of a human being in from now onwards particularly 2020 to 2030 people who don't invest in themselves by getting a, a high performance computer that has an aura operating system that follows them around with their mobile phone and uh, their smart wearables. If you don't do that, I mean, you're not going to be on the cutting cutting edge of anything. You'll just be living the simple life. You might want that. Um, lots of people will still want to have the simple life, but there's an ever-growing audience now that want to be able to be part of a multi-planetary species. They want world peace. They want uh, poverty eradicated. They they want. Uh, to know that they're contributing to the environment they want to be respected they want to be honored they want to be loved they want to share love they want to create we're not in a we're, right now we're in a definite phase where we are leaving the destruction behind and we're going into responsible abundance and creativity we're going we're literally in the next couple of years we're going to be have colonies on Mars and the moon like multi-planetary we still know almost nothing about the oceans we could have cities underwater like to do these complex engineering feats without having to spend 10 or 20 years in university and research and and on the job training like we don't have to do that long path anymore you can do six six months 12 months to get to build Nora and to adjust it like I'm aiming to be able to teach people to do it in a seven to ten day course uh, at a holiday resort in uh, like all over the world. I want to I want to travel my, for the next ten or fifteen years. I want to travel. I want to set up a family, and I want to teach people how to use auras. I want to work with the best of the best in emergency response, in health, in fitness, in every industry that is civilian I don't want to I don't want auras anywhere near the, the military it's all c civil completely so uh, 
yo, it's going to be the most important investment of your life because the world is changing. 5G internet is almost here, and when we we have driverless cars and flying cars and big rockets flying around, uh, starships, all this stuff, your aura will be able to come follow you around through this network of, of highly powerful computers so that you can simulate your journey through it and learn just in time. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to do the decades of study. You just need to be able to focus your energy into building an aura that has the right algorithms to recognize the world around you and recognize you, me. So I'm talking about my aura now. If I'm building my aura, I want it to recognize the environment as I recognize it, and I want it to recognize me as I recognize me, but I want it to also recognize me as the people I care about recognize me, so that we can understand each other and communicate on a much higher level. Uh, so, yeah, just-in-time learning is it's going to change everything. It's trillions of dollars is going to be mobilized through through that. Uh, then, community services that like public tenders, uh, volunteering, resource libraries, sharing economies, all that kind of stuff will fit through the community aspect. And then co-working. Uh, this is my mobile number. Uh, for WhatsApp if you want to work on this um, and yeah let's there'll be a the virtual reality and augment uh, what do you mean say so it properly this, all these kind of interactions with the aura will be put into virtual reality mode as well and what else, what else, what else, what else? Let's look at the avatar creations. So you're going to need to measure yourself with your height with your arms up, size of eyes, distance between, shoulder height with arms out, or interaction preferences with your arms forward. So that's like how far you want to reach into your aura when you're either using your mobile phone or you're using a headset where your comfort positions are. And these pre-organized measurements, body measurements, will help the algorithm to actually compute uh, the environment around you as well, because you're the known quantity. If, like the whole, the biggest part about why an aura will work is because you're programming it with your known quantity. Really, what you know about yourself is the only thing that you can be sure about. Um, well, that's not actually true, but the point I'm trying to get across is you know a lot about yourself, and if you can teach your aura to know a lot about yourself, it will understand the world as if looking through your, your eyes. So you'll be teaching it to be your higher mind, essentially, is what it, what it will become. It's, it, it'll be of you and more than you, but not you and you at the same time it's a little like if you haven't done a, a lot of philosophy it's a, it's a little confusing but um, you're connecting to a higher power and you're creating it in your image so that you can achieve more uh, from your light field and yeah these distances through triangulation uh, the computer will be able to know more about the environment around you. Uh, then we'll have, depending on what what device you have computing your aura, your avatar, you'll need to have a series of, of different ones because like this avatar, a clip art avatar or a, a 2D caricature avatar is going to take a lot less computer power to process their movement, their lips, their uh, their gaze tracking, all that sort of stuff. Whereas if you're getting to 
things like 3D computer generated and then ultra realistic computer generated like uh, this recent Chinese example um, they're going to take more computing power and so by it's advantageous to have an avatar for each and setting the how they're going to be computed so if you just got a mobile phone you might just have a voice or you might have a, a, one of these uh, avatars if you've got your high performance computer connected or, or a, a cloud infrastructure then you use the photorealism avatars and so this these avatars the photorealism and the 3d avatars they're also going to be tying in with all your personal health data so you'll be able to over time match up all of your health data into uh, into your avatar so you'll be having your your virtual avatar and then say you go and do an F fMRI scan or you go and do your blood tests and uh, then all your diet can be added in your exercise regimes and you can st the more data you add to the avatar the, the more you're going to be able to tune your own uh, personal health and well-being so start getting if your microbiome sampled of uh, your sweat your stool your urine your lungs uh, understanding the bacteria that makes up the human body as well as your own human cells you're going to be able to tune your life so you've never been healthier never been healthier never had more energy never been happier I mean with this evolving process I promise you with because computers are continuing to increase in capacity if you stay on if you jump on this thread of building an aura building an avatar and you keep evolving it you are going to have uh, so many more opportunities you'll be so much healthier so much fitter so much uh, there'll be so much more enjoyment and excitement and fulfillment in your life especially as there becomes a community of aura operators uh, the network of trust automatic trust will will grow and I mean if you get into into trouble or your life you need you need to pull the ripcord and eject from your life for some reason you'll have a community of people that will help you uh, to resettle or to um, solve the challenge that you've got uh, bring bring aid like if, if you're in a location where there's been a tsunami or a volcano or a hurricane you'll be able to get the data from around you very quickly and you'll be able to bring a trusted network of people and resources to that space I mean eventually like one of the things that is going to happen when uh, there's a few thousand more satellites up in the air and everyone's on the internet what something that will happen somewhere in the future my prediction is about five years we're going to start to have enough data and enough public uh, and government and corporate support to start phasing out the monetary system because well, we're not doing enough with the climate there's money is is uh, like it's a tool that was generated and it got us to now but it's starting to become less and less relevant because the challenges that humanity face are mind-boggling like to to reorganize the the movement of information and uh, resources fast enough to clean up the planet to create new ecosystems uh, to be able to get off world and ensure that the human race survives even if um, some cataclysm happens we like the money just is preventing that and uh, I believe in five years let's say let's say let's double that let's say if it happens in, in 10 years or let's just go 2030 if by 2030 there's a global referendum we will have enough data to show how we can efficiently move all anything and everything to solve the challenges that affect us all I mean it's that exciting and that's another reason why buying an aura and buying a computer that's 
worth more than your car uh, is really important. If you want to be on the cutting edge of these things, of, of knowing where all the sciences are and being able to utilize these new researches instead of just seeing, oh, that's on the news, okay, someone's doing it. If you want to be able to get all the best ideas and implement them into your life, then you're going to need to invest in some kind of computing infrastructure that can support that. And Auras will do it. It's, they don't exist yet, but the computing infrastructure exists. There's been too much focus on uh, creating AAA games and first-person shooters. There's some really good focus on uh, simulations and creativity, but not enough. If we start getting people into this, we will uh, have a much better outcome. Uh, what else have we got? Mind palaces. Yeah, building your own mind palace. So you've probably seen uh, movie Sherlock Holmes uh, or documentaries about memory champions and how, how they can memorize a deck of cards in a, like 20 seconds or something. They use visual memory tricks and mind palaces. So you're going to be able to construct your own mind palace. It, think of it in one way if you've ever used the IKEA app, augmented reality app, where you're looking at, at your home and you put in the different IKEA items into your home and you can see them right in your home. Imagine that, but not just for consumerism stuff, but being able to put all your digital information into your mind palace uh, whether it's your real house or it could be a, a student or a traveler that's in a staying in a dorm room but you have this massive mind palace where all of your information is stored and you can access access those things from anywhere so essentially it's kind of lowering the cost of living because you can store so much of your assets in this virtual space um, like they can those assets can then be connected to the sharing economies where people all around the area can share uh, like there's just so many reasons to have a mind palace um, for memory for sharing for uh, creative development for life plans for memories too many reasons and like these kind of things I suspect they will also ha uh, have health benefits for people with like early onset Alzheimer's and stuff like that being able to put them into familiar spaces and places really easily with the virtual worlds will I'm, I'm certain it will uh, stimulate neuron growth regrowth and Combining the virtual worlds and the augmented worlds with what we know about neuroscience and uh, the new drug delivery systems and microbiome, literally, I believe that we are past the stage where we will outrun death, except for in cases of severe accident or you don't want to, or you're tired of life and you want to die. I think we're coming into the age now where we will outrun death. So start planning as if you're going to live for 200 years, 300 years, 400 years. What do you want to do? What, like, start building your mind palace. Start, start building your aura. Are you someone that wants to do everything, try everything once? Uh, are you, so, say in the near future, let's, for hypotheticals sake, sake in five years time, 10 years time, uh, we've created a, a simulation where everything is automated and in the real world in five years time maybe a third of everything is is automated what kind of jobs are you going to want to do if, you, if your life if if everything that you uh, you want to do is available to you how are you going to structure that in a timeline so that you can achieve you can experience all these things. 
So, like, how awesome is that? Being able to really, literally say, I'm going to try everything once. Well, there's certainly a lot of things I wouldn't try, but I'd try a lot of jobs. I've already tried 30 or so different jobs in my 20 year working life. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not 20 years, it's about 15 year working life so far. Um, and there's a lot more jobs that I would like to do, but because of uh, the entry level bars or the shit like bad money or bad uh, work culture, I wouldn't go there and do it. But if, if it was structured in the way that I'm suggesting, where everything is automated and people just go where they feel purpose and uh, appreciation, many, many more things come, become open to us. And, and I'd love to be like doing a, being a pilot, I'd love to be uh, learning how to uh, drive, sh drive uh, large pleasure vessels like uh, ships um, and yachts. Uh, I'd like to work on cleaning up the water in India, uh, provide building smart cities, working on drones, designing solar roadways with mag levita magnetic levitation, so less friction power generation, like vacuum assisted waste removal for cities so that we don't have to have garbage trucks anymore, you just suck the waste through. At the same time, it's cleaning the air uh, because you're filtering the air. At the same time, capsules can generate energy if they're configured right and going through the pneumatic tunnels. They can be made to spin and if they're coated in the right uh, metals and uh, highly conductive materials, you'll be able to generate electric fields, so generate, store, transmit energy, data. All that stuff could be integrated into the road and the waste and the power and the water. So cities could be much more in more efficient, they could have double and triple redundancies so that we're not, like if there's a solar flare comes, um, this, <laughs> like the Carrington event, we should be able to have systems that will prevent catastrophic failure of the electrical grid or the communications networks. We have to avoid that at all cost because, well, many many lives would perish if if something went bad with the electrical grids on a planetary scale so we've got to look at these high-tech solutions and at the moment the money is preventing these things from coming we're seeing the basic research that's proving that all of these things can be possible like the at the nano fabrication all these meta materials super light super weight uh, super strong uh, super capacitors and then uh, we got nanotechnology understanding RNA and DNA integrating that so we have living cities there, there's no limit to where we can go but well there is a limit right now the limit is money that's the biggest limit on getting to this sustainable future uh, because, well, that's historically how it is. The people at the top wanted to have more power over the whole of reality. But now reality's not just the planet Earth anymore. Like, the reality is multiple planets, multiple star systems, uh, multiple lifespans. Because if, if <laughs> like if, oh, wrong one. <laughs> If, if we're coming to an age where we can live for two, three, four, five, ten times as long as a normal natural lifespan, that means we have even more uh, need to change the monetary system, get rid of it, replace it with responsible abundance. Responsible abundance. Responsible abundance. It could change very quickly, but we need to be able to simulate it and auras are one way that we can simulate it starting small starting with simulating your own life but growing 
as more and more auras come together into a decentralized distributed uh, ledger technology that so the reputations the supply chain management the uh, data management it's all systematic and trustable like full of trust being able to follow that thread but not having it it'll be way better to follow the thread of uh, all this energy rather than money because yeah for some reason that money has a negative bias in today's reality at least or there's a slight negative bias especially uh, well there has to be because there's so many people that are in absolute poverty in the world uh, there's so much waste like there's a negative there's a destructive bias to the monetary system it, that must come from inside us as human beings because it's just a tool it's an extension of us so if we want a better world we have to change that supply chain system to be responsible abundance and we can do it really fast if we build a global internet and everyone simulates their or at least a large portion of people simulate their ideal reality and the things that they want to do and then governments will understand where people want to be what they want to do without having to peer in and uh, feel like they're the big brother thing there's a fine line there's a fine line between a big brother government and a um, no I'm, I'm, I'm off track <coughs> I've waffled on for ages now I should go back uh, buying gifts wish lists tools products gift packs holiday deals uh, hackathon challenges Aura Oz home studios look this is we can start at ten thousand dollars they can go up uh, innovation hubs fifty thousand four hundred thousand three million uh, like this the so like a fifty thousand dollar hub would give you probably give or take like there's room to move here uh, five VR AR workstations with either one or two headsets each um, Oops, uh, I've got some errors here. Anyway, uh, then 400,000 you get like 40 stations with some drones, recording studio, then working up to life support systems and supercomputers. Uh, we can go, when we get to uh, a million users, there's going to be a new category of aura called the millionaire aura where rather than monetarily millionaires it's about having the opportunity to positively affect the lives of a million people and as we go higher into the billions there'll be the, the billionaire auras so these can these are people that are going to have earned the trust of large populations of people so the people that come up up the ranks th through the millionaire aura and the billionaire aura they'll be the the role models and because auras will be programmed with values virtues uh, emotions preferences those kind of things rather than just being um like there's a a lot of social media is is, is skin deep that you see that i see like a lot and a lot of the people that I've, I've noticed who are brilliant and have done something amazing for so society might get recognized once and then they're forgotten but we can we can change social media with auras so that the people that are generating more value for society are on a, a personal a moral of virtu virtuous level can raise raise up through the length the, the ranks um, as the community sees fit so 
that's going to be that's going to prove very valuable for changing social media and and creating an internet of good instead of having to have like I don't think we'll ever get rid of the neutral internet net, net neutrality and you can't get rid of the dark web but where's the where's the internet of good like where is it where, there is no such thing yet as the internet of good but I'm telling you now that I want us to create it together with auras so a color spectrum of values and virtues and then being able to annotate the internet and reorganize it into this new 5G or six, long time e long term evolution internet uh, where there's a distinct internet of good that's missing that's why we ha that's another reason why we have a negative bias we've got the dark web the deep well, dark deep web and the new net neutrality in internet but we don't have a distinct internet of good so until we have a distinct internet of good we're going to have that negative bias so come on get onto this idea people and give me a hand send some money send some come and find me or invite me to your to where you are i've literally got no money I, I get enough money to survive and to travel around, but I don't have enough money to build these computers. I don't have enough money to hire people. Uh, when I've had offers of, of money, either it's fallen through at the last moment because of some kind of family circumstance or, or because uh, some kind of uh, clause that I, I didn't like, that I couldn't agree to. Um, so I've, I'm just... I really, really appreciate it if uh, 2019 was the year that we can get this Aura operating system demonstrated and get some really brilliant people to build Auras for themselves and then move towards the 100,000 people around the world representing all languages, all cultures, tribes, geographies. That is how we'll get a general super intelligence for human beings. We, have, we, we can do it through auras and having that I, I think a minimum of 100,000 people will give you the best general intelligence of human culture society and intelligence um, that yeah will then grow as the human species grows and as more auras come on but if we have like these singular actors like uh, Google or Amazon, like the Samaritan or DeepMind or Watson or national militaries using using their AIs and stuff. With those kind of actors, there's more potential for damage, destruction, and error. If there's hundreds of thousands or millions of people developing the general intelligence, uh, knowing that there is a specific bias towards like we I'm suggesting that we have a specific bias in the general intelligence for joyful virtuous compassionate responsible abundance so if we, if we have some strict values that the general intelligence has to stick to human values and environmental values such as those uh, then there's much less chance of uh, having to fight off an AI uh, or being caught in an overmind of some dystopian uh, movie like dystopian movies and books so I'm certain that there is a way to create general super intelligence through this path it could be done in as little as six months like if we got a uh, hundred how much money would it take for a hundred thousand people around the world to have the latest in Intel or AMD processors uh, with the latest NVIDIA graphics cards or now any of the, I'm not sure of what's in the Chinese market I know India is almost finished with developing their open source hardware so I don't know what how, uh, what's being manufactured in, in Japan and 
like the we could take off the shelf parts right now put 100,000 computers together and distribute them around the world so that it technically covers every single language group all uh, countries all age groups like from young to elderly to and then ask them to build an aura so what they want to do with what they have done with their life what they want to do with their life what activities that they would like to do like if a man if it's a man answering what activities he would like to do with a small group of men or a lot of men or some women lots of women like creating filters like this that uh, make cause people to spend time with each aspect of society so you're spending time with children you're spending time with peers you're spending time with the opposite sex you're spending time with your elders you're spending time uh, with the environment and different configurations of of those sets for different activities it'll create balanced human beings with great experience uh, and it'll also help us to compute the resource um, supply chain for many 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 more people um, but I'm going to oh, I haven't even got through all of it yet but we've got all sorts of startups that we're planning uh, technical workshops with space development nexus work on festivals or even looking at um, uh, creating a homestay network for students and researchers to travel around at conferences and stay with families and instead of having to hire hotels all the time. Uh, but ugh, I could I could keep going. There's a lot more, but I'm getting a bit tired now and I'm gonna go out and get some dinner. Uh, time ten to eight. So it's the 29th of December 2018. I'm gonna put this on YouTube tonight. So if you if you want to work if you like if you think that I'm making a lot of sense uh, I'm gonna add one more piece of sense before I bring this to a close I was talking to some people a couple nights ago <laughs> my phone just beeped at me uh, about the uh, like I'm a I'm a an omnivore like I eat meat I eat veg uh, but I understand that there's a lot of stress put on the environment by uh, so many meteors in the world. I'd like to suggest that some countries start to experiment with a license for eating meat and changing the supply chain of, of how meat is produced uh, and um, distributed. So the simple thing is, I, it would do amazing things for society if the simple if you want to be a meat eater then you should have to slaughter butcher and store each animal that you want to eat at least once so instead of having uh, people working in abattoirs for their whole life all of the meat eaters cycle through the abattoir and they have to perform that duty at least once in their life. They have to look into the animal's eyes, they have to see it die, they have to know the respect personally, and then be able to continue eating meat of that description. I'm, I'm certain that there would be a large percentage of meat eaters would not eat meat anymore. They'd go to vegetarian or vegan. That would lower the pressure on the environment and not only that but the people who remain meat eaters are going to have a newfound respect for the animals because they've put themselves through that murder that slaughter seen the animal so we're kind of we're going to be moving the scales a little bit people are going to get more experience 
Um, some people are going to be horrified and convert to to vegetarianism, veganism, pescatarianism, that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's just an interesting thing that I know will help, uh, and hopefully, people from all sides can see that it's a rational and logical way of uh, improving the situation. But anyway, speaking of food, I'm going to go and get some. Today's the 29th of December. Uh, I'm in uh, like Chonbury, Pattaya area until January 1st, and then I'm heading up to Bangkok. Uh, if you want to give me a call, meet up, uh, go to a, a meet up group, or go and have a coffee or a meal, or uh, I'll come and visit your workspace. Give me a call. Um, it's uh, when I'm in Wi-Fi. <laughs> send me a, send me a message on WhatsApp, which is plus nine one six two three nine oh one three four eight two. And when I'm in Wi-Fi, I'll get the message. Otherwise, my email is Luke L U K E dot choose infinity. C H O O S E I N F I N I T Y at gmail dot com. Or you can look me up Luke Catalyst or Luke Nathan Hayes on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Yeah. So this has uh, been quite a long walkthrough of the Aura Oz app and it's not even finished there's like 240 pages of it's just getting into the data creation and trying to give you a little bit of a visualization on how the mobile phone app will work and then connecting to the larger ecosystem and such as the Aura Alliance and then Gajra Earth oh, I didn't even say Gajra Earth there's things about the Clean India app and data generation from Clean, cleaning up the rubbish in the streets and using the video capture from that to simulate 3D representations of cities so that we can then start overlaying smart city services and so uh, literally it's been years in the planning so close to getting it to a point where it's a functional reality oh, but I need some help and I'd like your help if you're really passionate about having a future that we can all believe in, a future that we can all feel happy and grateful for. Because um, while the present is really good, it's nothing compared to what we can do. There's so much room to improve, both internally, like I know I can improve a heck of a lot, but I know that you too, and I know that society can. So let's connect and let's Build some auras. Let's make the world a better place. Good night and Happy New Year. Because it's only, what, less than 24, well, sorry. It's about 30 hours away. <laughs> so, looking forward to a, a party tomorrow night.